Play Pinata Picks and Minute Madness exclusive games with insane odds you can't play anywhere else. Make your next bet at Sports Interaction. Download the app in Ontario. Use the QR code at the bottom of the screen or head to sportsinteraction.com slash STPN to get started. It's 19 plus. Please play responsibly. So Michael Bunting, um, some some fascinating stuff coming out of this, but I, I actually wanted to read a thread from Cam Sharon, who obviously is inside, you know, he's got insider knowledge of the Leafs organization because he was a part of it. And he said, I remember it being pretty widely reported that Bunting was leading the league in penalties drawn after the November game versus the Islanders last season. Yes. And Bunting's career to that point, his penalty differential was plus 0.8 per 60 minutes. Since then, he is a negative 0.0 per 60 minutes. Now, I don't know necessarily what those numbers mean, but I know <laughs> one number is good and one number is bad. Here, I can put it in simpler terms. Um like in by simpler, I mean not that Cam's wrong. I mean it's it's above my head. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a it's a way it's a Cam way of saying it. Give me a Steve way of saying it. Yeah, a dumber way of saying it, basically. So I I was uh, texting with Andrew Berkshire mm-hmm. um, today because I was also tweeting with Andrew Berkshire because he thought Leaf fans were being whiny complainers about this. And listen, I'm not saying we don't do that. We are whiny complainers for sure. Yes, to be sure, from time to time. Oh, to be sure, to be fair. So. He was tweeting about that, and what I said is, there's a few things. He draws the most, call, er, he drew the most calls in the league before. Sometime this season, the valve shut off, but he still draws calls. Yes, but not power plays. Most of the time, when he sends someone to the box these days, he's going with them, often on made up nonsense. Someone uh, responded, "Bunting is his own worst enemy because he acts like a child." Once things don't go his way, he's visibly disrespectful to the refs, therefore loses all benefit of the doubt. Very true. Mm -hmm. So what I said is, this is what I said at the height of that issue around two months ago. He's mostly dialed it back since, and it's changed nothing. He's paying a debt, I guess. So what I asked Berkshire, and we, we haven't found this yet, we just haven't. It's a tedious task, unfortunately, that we have to go through manually. Which means I hope someone on the Discord does it for us. But no, um, oh, stop it. No, it's no, you have to do it. No, because I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you why. So it's not penalties drawn versus penalties taken with bunting. He takes a lot of penalties. It draws the, a lot, and he draws a lot. It's when when does he draw a penalty? Second most in the NHL. When does he draw a penalty where he is also not assessed a penalty? Yeah, it's got to be a power play. You know, and like get, getting into a scrum behind the net, and you know, you can both, we just call it power plays created? Yes. Sure. And so, can it just be a number that isn't a decimal? So I, I wish I had thought of this idea last night. I didn't. I thought of it a couple hours before the show. I spent half of that time driving, so I didn't have time to look it up. Berkshire did look some things up, though. And what I pointed out in the LFR last night is Bunting was one of the best players in the league at drawing penalties, and I think drawing power plays. That's what I think. That's my theory. I don't know that. I don't have the numbers to back that up. At some point, the valve shut off. Mm-hmm. What do we all... Do you have a theory on what the valve was, Jesse or Adam? Uh, I think when a referee uh, put his two hands onto him and then shoved him... Multiple and times. And everybody said, oh, this is fine. Let's move on and not make this a giant issue how, that it was. How don't they even release a statement? How don't they because say nobody anything? Because nobody can hold them to it. Who's going to make them? That's shambolic. Yo, no, man, it's not. It's sub-professional. It, it's, it's, what, what, did Patrice, what was the Patrice, Patrice O'Neill thing? The punk test? The punk test, yeah. No, they, so the they, NHL passed it. Yeah. They, you, you step to them and they're like, what are you going to do? What the refs, hell are you going to do? Refs can do whatever the fuck they want. And like to, to put it in terms of not even the Leafs, there was a play last year that was in Dangitz, uh that I was surprised how many people defended. There was a scrum at the benches during a Sens-Sabres game. Four players from the Sens were involved in the scrum. Four players from the Sabres were involved in the scrum. There's 10 skaters on the ice. Eight of them were involved in the scrum. The refs have their hands on the players, grabbing Mm -hmm. at them and pulling at them. Throwing them. The play's still going. I think it was the Sens. Take the puck go into the offensive zone, and score. It's a legal goal. What? You can't... The re- Okay, the moment an official purposefully... It's one thing if you bump into the guy. That's fine. 
if the moment an official purposely put their hands on a player, so play's like, done. If play's I go done. from what if I go from this to like this, yeah. where I like hand on your shoulder to hand grabbing your jersey, play's right? done. Play's done. Who the fuck are you? Yeah. Who the fuck are you? I'm not playing against you. Get your hands off me. Right. What the fuck are you doing? So that's a non-participant interacting in the game. Yes. And that's, a fa- that's the same equivalent as a fan yeah. jumping on the field of play and touching a player. Right. How no. is it not dead? Well, no, but they're doing something they shouldn't be doing. So I'm putting my hands on the right. Blow the fucking yeah, play that, dead. That's, they that's have a whistle. thing for that, dumbass. It's called a penalty. It, it's in your mouth. <laughs> blow it. Oh my god. So anyway. Phrasing. So, so there's that. Uh, I think. That can, I can think you can you do the bunting incident again because uh, people don't remember from last that, night. No, him getting shoved by a ref. Oh, okay. who was so, a junior hockey player? <laughs> so Dan Kelly yeah. uh, is he's a he's not a ref. He's a linesman. People Sorry. are very picky about that. I don't. I frankly don't give a shit. But it's someone wearing black and white in charge of officiating the game. You know what I mean? So there's some sort of scrum in a Leafs-Tampa game on December 20th of this season. Nylander got hit behind the net. I want to say by pierre Edward Belmar. It doesn't matter. There's a scrum. The refs are looking for bullshit from Michael Bunting. They're looking for it. So Dan Kelly grabs him and goes to shove him off the ice mm-hmm. with enough force. Like It's one thing to restrain a player, fine. But he goes and shoves him with enough force the bunting almost falls over onto himself. Like how many players have like snapped ankles or like sprained oh, yeah. or whatever. And then when bunting regains his balance, it's the craziest thing. So Jesse's got the yeah, play up not. right now. We can't show it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we can't show the footage, unfortunately. Yeah. And like bunting handles it really well. So he's getting he says, guided off the, the ice, guided doing? off the ice, shoves him, bunting regains his balance, shoves him again. Buddy, you're not playing pro hockey anymore. You have to make this adjustment. You can't do that as a linesman. Now, I don't know if there was any retribution or if he had games taken away from him or whatever, but here's what I think happened. That made a lot of waves. A lot of negative things were said about Dan Kelly and a lot of negative things were said about officials on social media and I think internally as well. There's no way Kyle Dubas didn't go and complain and scream bloody murder about this to the league. Show this, Matty. So yeah, if you can you can show the still. <laughs> you show a still. Like look at look at Bunting. Look at that. Like what? And like if he stumbles back and whacks oh. Dan Kelly in the back of the head with his stick, it's Bunting's fault, right? Yeah. Bunting. Oh yeah. Like say what you want about Bunting. He was a choir boy during this whole sequence. Like he he didn't shove the official. If he shoves the official, it's ten. He years. wasn't even talking to the official. He was talking to Yeah, he was there. talking to him right afterwards, before he got shoved afterwards, off. Afterwards, he was like, what the fuck are you doing? You yeah. can read his lips. And th- yeah, and then he goes, that was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's, I love I love listening to Bunting talk because every now and then you hear the Scarborough. It was, I was just like, yeah, yeah, that was crazy. I heard exactly how you said that. Anyway, so I think the Leafs went to the league about that. Since that moment, there's been a correction on Michael Bunting. And this is why I was worried about Sheldon Keefe after the game last night saying Kyle's got to talk to the league about this. He said Kyle's going to talk to the league. Kyle's going to talk to the league about this. So it means that Kyle and and Sheldon already had a conversation. I mean, listen, hockey guys already think Dubas is a nerd. (laughs) They already think the Leafs are whiners. You know, Mm -hmm. the the league can't fucking stand its biggest cash cow. They can't. Um, Think of all the things they prevent them from doing. All well, the, the, all the, the Leafs aren't even on the executive owners list. Yeah, all the nitpicking stuff. They can't stand this team that, frankly, the league would not exist without. I'm not saying you should give them preferential treatment, but I'm saying you shouldn't, like, objectively fuck them on many calls. Mm-hmm. So And maybe have a local broadcast team, just throwing that out there. Anyway. Well, so that happens, and that is when I think the valve shuts off. Yes. So what Berkshire found and texted me, so see, the beginning from the beginning of the season to December 20th, that's the game mm-hmm. against the Lightning, Bunting was drawing 2.55 minors per 60 minutes of hockey, uh, which was even higher than last season's 2.2, um, but taking 1.85 minors per 60 up from last year's 1.47. So he's drawing more, he's taking more, but he's also drawing more than he's taking. Mm-hmm. Good. Positive uh, penalty differential. We like that. Since December 20th, he's drawing just 1.58 penalties per 60 and taking 1.76. So 
So it's almost a penalty minute, a full penalty minute per 60 down hmm. from that time. Like, so like someone who's better at math than me, like it's down at least 33% since that moment. That's not an accident. That's absolutely not an accident. And this is why I scream bloody murder in the LFR about corruption and these guys being whiny babies. Like, you can't tell me that's not on purpose. The 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 Dennis Weidman uh, thing where he injured a ref and that ref has never refed again. That was terrible and you can't do that and he deserved to be punished for that. But officials very, very provably through numbers, obviously took it out on the Calgary Flames for the next calendar year. Yeah. You can't do that. And then the moment it was pointed out, it was corrected. Right? So they do this. Um, I think back to Alexander Burroughs. They're the third team in any game. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think back to Alexander Burroughs, who, you know, was a motor mouth and, you know, did embellish and was a thorn in the side of many officials. There was a game where he was diving around and the refs fell for it. And a ref, according to Alex Burroughs, who's now an assistant coach with the Montreal Canadiens, um, according to Alex Burroughs, the ref skated up to him before the game. He's like, you made a fool of me last game and I'm going to get you. <laughs> and he called him for three penalties that night. And Burroughs set, talked to the media about that afterwards. I forget the name of the guy. I forget the name of the guy. Doesn't matter. I'm sure you could find it. So anyway, uh, from what Berkshire said. So he went from wildly positive in terms of penalty differential to slightly negative. So again, it's not wildly negative. Like he's not being completely shut out of these things and screwed, but they're calling him differently. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's his fault. You know, maybe it is a correction. Like maybe they reviewed plays of his and they're like, you know what? This guy's fooling us a lot. And we can't let him do that. I, but I think it's been an overcorrection. How did he end up with a misconduct last night? And I think that's where we, we got to get to. Fuck him. That's why. Well, because he, you know, fuck him. He just, why. he's just, his back yeah. is just eating stick, right? Like he's getting cross check after cross check after cross check. And How's he ends up with dive? a misconduct. Yeah. I don't know. Also, like, and also he doesn't have to dive if you do your job. So the sequence that happens, Bunting lays a hard check on Jake Wallman, mm -hmm. and it is deemed to be legal by virtue of it wasn't called, right? Mm -hmm. Wallman didn't like the hit. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Cross checks him and it's not called. <sighs> Hockey lore or code or whatever the fuck you want to call it. That's the players dictating the game or whatever, sorting it out amongst themselves. You hit me, I cross check you, fine. Pound of flesh, fine. We're good. It's the second cross check that Wallman gets called for. Mm -hmm. And Bunty got called for diving. Last time I checked, officials don't like cross checks to the vertebrae. That's what put the guy out. And it's a dive? That's embellishing? It's shocking. It's a shocking call. And it's the second shocking embellishment call against Bunting in recent memory. He's paying a debt. They're obviously paying a debt. Go and look at the numbers. Go and watch the footage if you think I'm biased. Now, question. Keith. Uh, and, and David, I'm, I'm quoting from David Alter's article in the Hockey News here. He said, there was some discipline by Keefe on Bunting for his part in the fiasco. And he's talking about the, the cider thing with the stick uh, after the misconduct yeah. and everything. He said, he said the forward was benched for most of the third period after his misconduct expired and was limited to just two shifts for the remainder of the game. Now, I wondered about he's, that. He's fumbling the bag. Hold on. Some of this is on Bunting. I'm wondering, though. And, and I, I, I agree with you there, but... Is it possible that Keith is holding him out of the game? Maybe because it's like, don't be an idiot, but also because if we put you out there, you're going to get called. Yeah. <laughs> and we're no, trying I, to come back and win. But, but well, and this is, he, this is why he can't play on the top line. And it's gotten to the point where he can't play in the top six. Like, like whatever type of player you think he is, he's got 20 goals this season, right? He's mm -hmm. a good hockey player. He scored 60 points last year as a quote unquote rookie mm -hmm. who's like three years into his career, whatever. Um, second up to second runner up to rookie of the year. Yeah, at yep. forty at forty three. Yeah, it's amazing. Years old. Yeah, it's it's incredible. <laughs> but he's a good hockey player. But uh, the way the game is called is significant. It's important. And if one of your players uh, simply is out of favor, 
with NHL officiating, you can't have them in the top six. So, so what's the best team in your estimation on, and I don't want to call it gaming the system because that's not fair, but I would say the best politicking? team. Politicking? Politicking with the refs. John Cooper and the Tampa Bay Lightning are exceptional. Mm-hmm. Who else? Mm, the Bruins, but they do take their fair share of calls. Well, no, no, they don't. They do not take their fair share of calls. They take calls. And that's the difference, mm. right? There have been, and and this is where uh, uh, Berkshire's numbers, it gets cloudy a bit. And this is why I asked for power plays. So here's the last part that he sent me. Bunting is first in drawn calls and fifth in calls against pre-December 20th Dan Kelly incident. He's seventh in drawn calls and fourth in calls against since then. So he's always been a high event guy, a high penalty guy. But even when you look at that, we're seeing a flip. Mm -hmm. We're seeing a reverse of what happened before. The reason I want to see power plays um, drawn and taken, even that doesn't show the full picture because it's the stuff not being called on bunting. Like, you know what I talked about with um, Matthew Kachuk? Mm Mm-hmm. Um, and how if you're, unless you're a complete idiot after the whistle, you can get away with anything that only applies if they're not actively looking to give you a penalty. The officials go out there and they actively look to give bunting a penalty. I'm not saying it's an anti-leaf thing. They don't do that for Matthews. They don't do that for Martin. They don't do that for Nylander. They don't do that for Tavares. They don't do that for anyone else on the team, but they go out there and they go 58's a problem. We're looking for him. For some reason, they don't do that for Marshan. For some reason, now, they don't do that for Kachuk. If somebody made you look like a fool at your job, mm-hmm. dove and tricked you and that sort of thing, would you not do the same? You know, I don't know. I, I can't say I'm any better or different. I'm not going to get on a pedestal or a high horse and say that I am. But that is what's happening. They're human, right? It needs to be solved. It was solved with Kadri, somewhat. He was perhaps drawing too many calls. and oh, It then, only took three suspensions in the playoffs. Well, no, no, no. This was before that. This is like... Uh, oh, okay. This is before that. Early in Babcock's tenure. And this is what we do as Lee fans. We get a little too excited about our fancy stat man. And with Kadri, we said, look at him. He's got the highest penalty differential in the league. He leads the league in drawn calls. He's brilliant at it. Ref see all that? Mm-hmm. I'm sure... A, nephew or a cousin sends them a tweet or maybe they got a burner and they maybe look at it and they go this fucking fucker they right. start looking at cadre footage and they're like this is the stuff he does so it's not just okay we need to call him differently it's we need to make a correction mm-hmm. so cadre not being able to draw a call at all wouldn't show up in the numbers properly Mm -hmm. because yes, you'll see the power plays drawn completely dry up. What you won't see is the sheer amount of bullshit he has to deal with night in and night out. Is that a way of the refs? That goes uncalled. Is that the way the refs sort of teach you a lesson? It's debt. mm -hmm. It's debt. It's fuck around and find out debt with the officials. And is that not corrupt? Is that not biased? Is that not the exact opposite of what they're paid to do? And that's all true. But let me go back to a point that you made earlier that a lot of people are asking online, which is, okay, so Kyle Dubas makes that call. I think they have to give it 24 hours. Yeah. There's a rule where there's a cooling off. Mm-hmm. So if you're upset about something, you it has to be after this 24-hour period has thing, and then you can talk to the league. Let's say Kyle or even Shanny calls, because Shanny and Bettman get along, um, we think. Um, one of them Allegedly. calls, they talk and, uh, and they're chatting it up and, and that sort of thing. How, how will that actually affect the Leafs? Because a lot of people are concerned that if they lodge a complaint, the refs will just double down. So one thing yeah. I think is important in the conversation is that's adjacent to this whole thing is that the refs always find a way to even up the calls. Yep. Like even if Bunting is taking all these penalties, they're gonna find a way to. Even is it up the, the Leafs' call. turn? We have 
video and audio evidence of this yes. from the Tim Peel Thank incident. Thank you, Tim Peel. Yeah. Yes. And so I, I was pulling up the power play opportunities for and power play opportunities against. And it illustrates just how ridiculous the NHL is about these things because you look at the you look at the stats right now and the Ottawa Senators they lead in power play opportunities for mm -hmm. they also are number three in power play opportunities against the Toronto Maple Leafs who do not get a lot of calls they're 22nd in uh they're 21st in power play opportunities for are 21st? 22nd in power play and opportunities again. It's been like that for years. It it's is, been like that for years. If you look down this chart, they are all pretty much right within five, right there within where they are in opportunities for and opportunities against. Bad uh, league, man. Boston Bad is league. number three in opportunities for and against. They are. Oh, Boston. Where am I looking? Where am I looking? Boston. Starts with a B. B. Boston. Do you see Boston? They're actually. Oh, I have the wrong stat there. Ah. Uh, they're number four. So they're mm. three and they're four. You know, it, it lines up too evenly uh, With across, almost everybody. across the entire league. So this whole bunting Badly. thing, I'm not too concerned because mm -hmm. the refs are going to find a way to make it now, four penalties. Is each. that in the playoffs, though? This is regular. This is this year's regular season. Okay. Because I wonder about the playoffs. I think it's the same game. In the, in the off chance anyone from the Leafs organization hears this. <laughs> Here's what I would like to see them do. Don't even pick up the phone. Don't even pick up the phone. Let it go. 